BCB presents Pro Wrestling Weekly. Enough is enough, and it's time for a change. I can't believe I'm putting my voice to this. Call in with a question or comment at 215-949-3232 or 888-922-2149. Thank you for your irrelevant opinion. And now, here's your host of Pro Wrestling Weekly, Ferran Derry. The first thing you need to do is to tell these people to shut up. If you want to hear what I got to say, I'm a broadcast journalist. I have a right to my opinion. Oh, son of a... I am the best on this microphone, in that ring, even in commentary. Well, there's the sound of the bell, and uh, we're as set to go as we're going to be. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ron Derry here live with you outside of uh, the Senator Tommy Tomlinson's Children's Expo. For whatever reason, the uh, parking and traffic here uh, makes the Schuylkill Expressway look like the Daytona 500. Uh, and I've spent at least the last hour and 15 minutes trying to get into the location here. The philosopher Chris Irner is probably about six cars ahead of me here in this turtle paste parade of vehicles. And uh, we hope to be inside the building uh, for you at some point here. But for now, I'm broadcasting live via my cell phone in the car. So uh, if you say anything can happen in professional wrestling, uh, anything can happen in professional wrestling radio as well. So this should certainly be interesting, to say the least. Uh, we are here with you at 2002 Rockway here in Holland, PA, Council Rock South High School. And, wow, what, what can I say? Where, where to start here? I, I'd say come on down here, and uh, I'm sure they'll have things figured out at some point. At least I certainly hope they will. Uh, we've got Nick Cataldi back at the studio. Uh, we're going to be <laughs> figuring things out as we go along here. So thank you for the yay. Yes, uh, definitely be having a chat here as the uh, as the hour goes on as we get things uh, figured out. Uh, programming note for next week: we uh, weather pending will be preempted as we've got Pensbury High School baseball coming your way next Saturday. So I'll have the predictions certain to go wrong for the Extreme Rules pay per view. I'll more than likely put those up on the WBCB Pro Wrestling Weekly Facebook fan page. Bear with me as I'm shuffling through notes. Uh, yes, as best I can, uh, hands-free. Easier said than done, to say the least. Uh, yeah, doing things that shouldn't be doing, being done in a uh, very, very slowly moving vehicle. Man, this is uh, this is this is very interesting. We'll we'll get to some news and notes to get things going right off the bat here as we're making our way around. Uh, so, well, Daniel Bryan, uh, he was pulled from the European Tour. Of course, WWE, they're, uh, they're on a road trip of their own as uh, they're just finishing up uh, over in Europe, taking care of uh, the different shows in the U.K., Germany, and other places in Europe. Well, WWE removed advertisement for Daniel Bryan for the remaining dates on the European Tour as of the middle of this past week. It's believed to be injury-related. No word on how or if this affects his intercontinental title match against Bad News Barrett at Extreme Rules one week from tomorrow. We'll have the uh, lineup as it stands, including a couple of matches, one very interestingly dubious match that was added to the card this past Thursday night on SmackDown. We've got that coming up for you uh, in just a little bit. Also, uh, going over to Impact Wrestling... As, uh, oh, the state police helicopter has just uh, taken off here at, uh, at Senator Tomlinson's Children's Expo. I wonder if that has something to do with uh, some of the traffic backup. That's uh, certainly an interesting uh, question. Hopefully I'll be able to get some answers for that. But, uh, yes, a very closely flying helicopter overhead. One of the many events that are going on here, we've got the uh, SEPTA uh, canine unit, the SEPTA Transit canine unit. They're in the house here. We have uh, numerous uh, police, uh, ambulance, and fire engines. I see uh, the Newtown Ambulance Squad here from uh, from my vehicle as we're making our way around here. Uh, a couple of fire engines. I do see one of the orange uh, SEPTA vehicles in the background as well. There's, uh, there's definitely a lot uh, going on here, and uh, I'm going to try to bring it to you as best I can as I also try to 
figure out how and if we're going to get set up here or if this is going to be uh, from the parking lot of Senator Tommy Tomlinson's Children's Expo here at Council Rock South High School here in Holland. Uh, looking over to Impact Wrestling, as I was getting to before the, uh, the chopper interrupted us here, uh, uh, Taz has left TNA. Uh, TNA head of talent relations John Gaborik announcing via Twitter that Taz is no longer with the company, tweeting, quote, after five-plus years, TNA and Taz have mutually decided to part ways. A champ in the ring and on the mic, we wish him nothing but success. Taz also noted the situation on his Twitter page, saying, quote, like to thank TNA Wrestling for the opportunity to apply my craft for the past several years. Best wishes to them in the future. Now, another Impact Wrestling news, stand back. There's a TNA agent coming through. That's right, Shane Hurricane Helms now working for TNA Impact Wrestling as an agent and producer. A couple of interesting uh, tidbits here as we're making our way around. Hopefully I'll get some sort of answer from, uh, I don't know, some of the dignitaries here as to what's going on with access to the building is there are a litany of parking spots open and nobody seems to take any of them. I don't know, do I be bold and take one of them and try to figure things out? Maybe I'll do that during the commercial break. The, uh, the first time out here is we're taking you right up to 1 o'clock where we've got Phillies baseball, the Phillies and Washington Nationals. That is coming up in a little bit. Uh, you know what, let's, let's go over the Extreme Rules lineup. As we know, heading into this week, there were four matches set up on the card and a couple of developments with uh, some of them as far as the namesake of the pay-per-view, Extreme Rules. Finally, some stipulations being put into some of the matches and... Uh, they are interesting ones, to say the least. We'll just uh, we'll leave it at that. Uh, first of all, I mentioned Daniel Bryan and Bad News Barrett. No stipulation has been added for that other than it is for the Intercontinental Championship. Also, you've got Nikki Bella defending the Divas title against Paige, who won the Divas Battle Royal on Raw this past Monday in roughly uh, four minutes or so. Also, you've got Seth Rollins defending the WWE World Heavyweight Championship against Randy Orton. And a couple of stipulations were determined based on match victories from this past Monday on Raw. And one of those where Rollins got to choose a stipulation that would affect Orton and Orton vice versa for Seth Rollins. So Orton decided to make it a steel cage match. And Seth Rollins opted that Orton's RKO is banned from being used in the match. So something tells me we'll see a few setups for the punt kick, or we might see the punt kick versus the curb stomp as far as finishing maneuvers. Now, a couple of matches that were added a couple of days ago on SmackDown. First, there's Roman Reigns against The Big Show in a last-man-standing match. Something tells me the crowd isn't exactly uh, up for that necessarily. And uh, then the other one, which uh, I'm going to have a little bit of a retrospective as, uh, as we go forward here, uh, Sheamus taking on Dolph Ziggler in what they're calling a kiss-me-arse match, where uh, it, it pretty much as it sounds, uh, oh, we've got the philosopher Chris Ermer uh, jumping in the car here. He's jumping in next to me. Uh, I'm kind of engineering myself, and we've got him here as well. Uh, Chris Ermer, wow, what's, uh, what the heck to say here? We'll get back to the Extreme Rules lineup in just a moment. Uh, right now we've got Extreme Parking Wars going on here. It's insane, Ferran, but I'm hooking things up here, and I don't know. I came in to, to, help, to help you out if that's possible. Uh, you know, I, I'm... <laughs> there may be no help for Yeah, me. I was going to say, we're, we're walking a tight rope without a net underneath of us here. Uh, we... Uh, uh, connected via the cell phone. Uh, thank goodness for Bluetooth. You know, you always want to make sure you drive uh, hands-free. You know, be safe and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, pretty sure we're connected back in the studio. I'm sure if we weren't, Nick Cataldi would be uh, mentioning something otherwise. Yeah, I heard you loud hey. and clear. Oh yeah, there. There we go. It's, mention his name and gives you one word. That is uh, that is that is dynamite value for uh, for, for I don't know I don't know where I'm going with that. Feel free, Nick, if you want to, to chime in here, because uh, <laughs> uh, to say the least, we're uh, in a bit of a, a pickle here. And Ferran, I jumped in in order to encourage you to take a quick break. When we come back, we will have better audio quality, even if we're not in the building. 
So, oh, okay. That's uh, all right. So, uh, so you said, you know, maybe, let me finish the Extreme Rules lineup, and then we'll take it to break. Maybe I'll uh, pull into one of these spots here, and we'll see what we can figure out. Is yeah. that uh, yeah. that kind of the game plan? Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, good, because I'll have to figure out whether I can keep the call while switching off of Bluetooth and going to my handset. This is this is unpredictable radio, to say the least. Uh, as I was saying, yes, yeah, Sheamus against Dolph Ziggler in a Kiss Me Arse match. Obviously with the, yeah, I know, you're, you're cracking up with that already, Chris. I, I, I knew I should have gone over this a little bit later, because uh, some of these matches you would definitely crack up at, but, no, well, pun slightly intended. Yeah, crack? No? Yes. Okay. All right, uh... But yes, the, uh, the the loser must uh, pucker up and uh, put give a peck to the winner's posterior, as it were. That's a literal. Uh, okay. Yeah, literal alliteration. I think is where you were going. No, it's uh, no, it, it is, uh, and it's not the first of its kind. A little bit later in the show, once we're uh, set up here, I'll actually have a uh, a retrospective of uh, past Fanny stipulation esque matches. Uh, I've got those here. We've got uh, a lot more news and notes. But uh, I think we're going to, yeah, oh, that's right. We also got to talk about uh, our friends over at George's Cars and Collectibles. That's coming up. The Monster Factory, uh, conspicuous by his absence, Lucas the Intern. Uh, there's a good reason for that we'll get into. And, of course, On Point Wrestling, that's tonight as well. We'll give you all that local stuff as we uh, we're definitely not able to take calls other than me calling into the station to broadcast here. So, uh, sorry, Ed from Northeast Philly. Uh, I'm kind of stealing your thunder here, but uh, let's see if we can uh, get things set up here, get a few uh, knobs turned, a few dials connected or wires connected or dials. But we'll figure it all out. That's what the philosopher Chris Ermer is here for. And uh, we're, we're going to throw it back to the station. Nick Cataldi going to play some spots, and we're going to see if we can get uh, connected in the building or something close to it. Uh, mm -hmm. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly. We are live from the parking lot of Senator Tommy Tomlinson's Children's Expo here at 2002 Rockway, Council Rock South High School here in Holland, PA. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 AM WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Give me a valid reason why you don't like Cena. You got to cheer him at some point. Well, you know what? We're going to a children's expo next week, so you'll be on home turf. The kids love oh, John that's Cena. That's hilarious, Ferran. That's not what I'm I was... pointing out facts. I know. That's what I do as a broadcast journalist. Yeah, you have a right to your opinion. And now, more Pro Wrestling Weekly with your host, Ferran Derry. You're just hating Cena because you have no other choice. Well, we certainly had some uh, choices, to say the least. As far as our options, I guess, for lack of a better term. Uh, welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry walking our way into the... We're making it in, yeah, Ferran. We're, we're making it in. It's crazy. <laughs> With the parking and the traffic and everything, we're connected via the, uh, the the Comrex, the mobile Comrex here. See, we're of the people. We're with yeah. the people as we walk in here. As part if of you smell what Council Rock is cooking. That's right. It's the people's radio. Here on Yeah. Inside finally. Oh man, this is great. Always good to be here. This year was a little bit of a different experience trying to get into the facility for sure. I I heard you describing it, and as you said, it was a, a, a what do you say, a parade of turtle paste vehicles? That was well said, Ferran. Yeah, I <laughs> now I'm to pace, uh, or, or I guess describe it in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, well done. And this, uh, the gym is set up differently this year. Yeah, there's no moon bounce by where our usual spot is. Oh, my gosh, Ferran, change is not my forte. You ain't kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, and here, I mean, this is the 12th annual Senator Tomlinson's Children's Expo, but we're having the luck of it being the 13th. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see one of my, uh, my the parents of uh, the, my daughter's friends here at the Children's Expo. That's cool. Oh, very nice. Benjamin Sorry. Rush Elementary School in the house. This Coalition is, for Healthy Youth, they're here. Yeah, you, you aren't kidding. Th this is just, we are, we are literally connected via a, a headset here, and we are walking in tandem 
checking out the sites as we also figure out where our table is. It's probably back. Uh, oh, it's back in the it. same spot. I see it. But meanwhile, we're passing some of the uh, the dignitaries. We've got uh, the Pennsylvania Office of the Attorney General here. We've got uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Bucks County. Um, now, before we, before we get out of here, Ferran, I gotta find an answer to what was going on with the parking lots and traffic situation. Yeah, we've uh, we're definitely gonna have to figure that out in some way, shape, or form. But the uh, Franklin Institute Traveling Science Show, we've got that going on here. Uh, free child IDs uh, sponsored by uh, Sheriff Edward Duke Donnelly. Ah, uh, Ferran, touchdown. Okay, we, we have made it. Yeah, we have arrived at our location here. <laughs> Put the slammy down. Yeah, I can and put the slammy award down. Make I can yourself bring out the championship belts. <laughs> Take your jacket off and stay a while. It's a, a jacket. It's it's like 80 degrees outside. It, it is a beautiful day, and maybe that's part of the uh, the reason for the big turnout. The war, yeah. Well, we have finally uh, we made it. We're uh, settling ourselves in, attempting to anyway. Break out the belts, Ferran. Always great when we do go to the expos. The kids love to see. The oh yeah, the uh, the replica championship belt. See, yes. I I unsheath one of them and uh, and the kid already jumps up here to the front. Yeah, go ahead, hold that up. That'll feel good. Intercontinental. Is it? Yeah, it's a replica intercontinental championship belt. And also, you have. Looks like you've been doing some work, Ferran. You got. Oh stop. yeah, there are a litany of uh, autographs on that. That is cool. Looking at that, we got Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Uh, Gosh, uh, Val Venus, uh, Hall of Famer Rikishi, Shawn Michaels on there, just to name a few. I got to give you a little more uh, wire here to. Oh, there we go. Give, give, give me a chance to get around the table here. Yeah, th things changing uh, second by second here. Hey, it is... thanks to Nick Cataldi for uh, being on his toes and doing what he can do. Did you make it on time? They got here at 11. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. So how did you get? Did you go in through the back door or something? Did you guys see Michelle Obama? I left. Them. They were putting people in at the very front entrance. They started redirecting everybody else. I guess. Boy, this is. I mean, apparently, because I mean, at, uh, uh, what maybe uh, five minutes to 11, I was turning on left on the rock way, and it was crawling. <laughs> They were letting people in the front here. Okay. Yes, one of uh, one of my friends and uh, colleagues, Brett, who uh, informing us that he got here considerably earlier than we did, even though he, I, yeah, I was just even though he was supposed for, to be yeah. doing a radio show. Yeah. yeah, but I got here in plenty of time. It just it was that hour and twenty minutes to get from about a half mile. I could have walked in less time. Yeah. I'd like to I'd like I, to think I'm in decent shape. I could have walked that le uh, half mile in less than an hour and 20 minutes. Well, I was thinking of doing the same, but didn't see yeah, yeah, a real they, good they spot are as, to... The belts uh, are as to, heavy as they say. To park up on the grass or whatever. Oh, yeah. No, same thing with the replica Slammy Award. <laughs> yeah, they, they are a great attraction here at the... Uh, Senator Tommy Tomlinson's Children's Expo. Based on the traffic out here, we're just getting set up, but we've been broadcasting live since 12 noon, at least trying to figure out how to do so. Part of it was my cell phone. Now we've got the wired kind of connection here. We weren't able to bring the speakers in like we usually do, but it looks like the setup in general has changed. Yeah. Last year we had the moon bounce to our right. Actually, the last few years we've had the moon bounce here, and now they've got... Uh, Senator uh, Duke Donnelly's uh, child ID set up. You know what, Ferran? I think they want to keep an eye on us. Oh, they, they, put, they, they put the sheriff next door. Oh, sweet mercy. Just in case we Maybe, do. You know what? They thought Lucas was going to be here. Yes. That's what it is. If we get out of line or if Lucas was to step out of line, they'd, they'd have uh, various members of Bucks County's finest right here. Bam. Put them right back in this place. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Wow. Well, wow. Where do... Uh, well, uh, let, me, let me talk a little bit about the event. I know things, as I said, changing second by second here. We are... Oh, they got live music this year. Yeah, That's we got live music feature. going on. Of course, the Franklin Institute. You know what? I opened, I, I opened the first page here. It says, Welcome to my 13th Annual Children's Expo. See, they advertise it as the 12th on the site. No wonder we're having such bad luck. It's the 13th Annual. Yeah, well, I'm not usually superstitious, but uh, this time, I, I think that maybe that's why... Oh, I, had, I am superstitious like the Stevie Wonder song of the same name. Yeah, well, uh, maybe that's why we couldn't make it through the 
traffic. This they they told me the 12. It was the 12th annual, just to you know put me at ease. And then I get here and they, 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 hook, they hook up the voodoo on you. Uh, apparently. Yeah. But not the Voodoo Kin Mafia, the old uh, tag team from TNA. <laughs> Had to tie it in somehow. Yeah, it's That's right. What I do. Anyway, Pro Wrestling Weekly, so let's keep yeah, it connected. Yeah, it makes sense. we got to find different ways to keep it connected here. Anyway, we've finally made it here into the gymnasium of uh, Council Rock South High School. Senator Tommy Tomlinson's Children's Expo. Events going on all the way until 2 o'clock. Uh, I think, yeah, coming up at uh, 12.30, Sesame Street's Abby Cadabby is going to be here. Oh, maybe that's what all the fuss is about. Either that could be. The, uh, outside, as we saw, the uh, Newtown Ambulance Squad. We passed them. The Northampton Township Police Department and uh, Volunteer Fire Company. Uh, I noted the Pennsylvania State Police helicopter that flew overhead. Yeah, that was a lot closer to you than it was to me. Yeah. I had to have been uh, very loud to say the least. Yeah, I felt the, I felt the rotors gave me a little haircut. Oh, geez. Well, I don't have that much to cut at this point. <laughs> Got like rid of that a couple of weeks ago. It looked like they trimmed you right up. Uh, and also uh, coming up at 1:30, the SEPTA Canine Unit. That's going to be going on outside as well. Well, I love the uh, Franklin Institute live music the moon bounce, and this year they even have a slide. They got the moon bounce and a bouncy slide. Oh, they put, okay, I see. They've, they've got different activities on opposite end. They've got the wrestling in this corner. They've got the inflatable slide in the corner to my, my immediate left. You've got to uh, my opposite left the, uh, the moon bounce, the tropical island moon bounce, and currently going on in the corner over to my, uh, in front of me to my right, is the Let's Play Today fitness and exercise activity. That's going on uh, over in the corner there. So kids getting active, getting fit. And I don't know, maybe they'll, they'll learn to take a bump or two. No, no, probably not. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, yeah, lots of different organizations here. I see uh, Pensbury Manors here. I've got uh, the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board, uh, alcohol education. Just kind of going by what I see here. Yeah, it's calling it like I see it. Uh, right. Almost a play-by-play -play of uh, what is going on here at the uh, Senator Tommy Tomlinson's Children's Expo. As you have already described, to our right, we have Sheriff Duke Donnelly's table. And what they're doing, they're providing IDs for kids. And I think it's like In a case they get lost, they can just kind of, yeah, exactly. Uh, they can let, uh, let an adult know who they are and uh, try to help them get back to where they belong. Yes. Valuable service provided by the Bucks County Sheriff, Duke Donnelly. Good stuff there, and great event, as always. And now I wonder if people are, if the uh, the, the, the mood is going to stay as effervescent as it is right now, as soon the people who had to wait for like an hour to park are going to start to come They're in. They're going to start to file in. This place is going to be even more packed than it already is. Packed, and the, the mood is going to get a little surly. I don't know about that. No, you're right. You're right. They'll get I mean, in here. The kids yeah. will be having fun. Abby Cadabby is here. So. Oh, Abby Cadabby is. Oh, look at that. How about that? How could it be anything but wonderful here at and Tommy Tomlinson Senior oh, Expo? Man. And the events, they're, uh, they're keeping on coming, including uh, tonight, On Point Wrestling, taking a look at the local scene. Uh, that's tonight at the uh, OTW Arena, 1041 Glassboro Road in Williamstown, New Jersey. Uh, the doors open at 7 for that with a 7.30 bell time. Uh, to give you an idea of a few things, you've got uh, a few of the matches. An Ultimate Jeopardy tag match of Notorious Inc.'s Drew Blood and Devin Moore against the firm's Oz Tyler and Xavier Cross. Also, uh, Joey Janela faces Scott Summers in a number one contenders match. And uh, Jeff Cannonball takes on Bulldozer Matt Tremont in a Fans Bring the Weapons match. And uh, we've, we've got a little girl here holding the, uh, well, attempting to hold both a balloon and the Intercontinental title belt at the same time and uh, getting a picture with the belt. That's some of the fun that we have here at uh, Senator Tommy Tomlinson's Children's Expo. So On Point Wrestling tonight, that's uh, their, their event, A Different Kind of Pain. That's uh, going on tonight in Williamstown, New Jersey. Also next week, since uh, we won't be, well, weather pending, we won't be on the air, uh, Wrestling Action returns to the Monster Factory next Saturday, April 25th at 541 Manto Avenue in Paulsboro, New Jersey. That's a 2 p.m. bell time. 
where you can see QT Marshall square off against Damian Adams, uh, Deanna Perrazzo against MV Miranda Vianet in Monster Factory Girls action. Also in a mixed six-person tag match, Paid in Foles, Jade Spencer, Royale Money, and Chad Kensington face Funky White Boy, Mark Cruz, and Lisa Rennie. Also, Shooters Inc.'s Nick Camarado and Billy Damiana, they defend their tag team titles against the Down Boys. And Clutch Adams puts his Monster Factory Heavyweight Championship on the line against former UFC fighter Matthew Riddle, who uh, we announced last week he's uh, getting a tryout next month with WWE. So, big time. Yeah, big time. Well, not the big show, Paul White. No, that's a, no. but isn't that that's what they call it? No, they call it the show. The, yeah, for oh. Major League Baseball, right? Oh, yeah. There you go. The show. The Very show. good. He has reached the show when you get to that top level, the top rung. <laughs> yeah, the top rung, reaching for that brass ring, as Vince McMahon talks about. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, tickets are just fifteen dollars for adults, ten dollars for kids twelve and under are available at the door. Check out MonsterFactory.org for more details and. Uh, Well, the Monster Factory, they're going to be holding a three-day camp coming up in a couple weeks, May 1st through 3rd, for those both with experience and those looking to begin or further their training. So Lucas, conspicuous by his absence, he's getting ready for that. He is going to be a part of that. And you have a chance to be a part of it, too. This is your chance to train to become a professional wrestler. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. I can hold on here. That skinny... He's been hitting the bag. He's adding a little bit of muscle. He's yeah. not the bag of bones that he was as the 15-year-old intern when he came in here. He's 17 and now, with parents' permission, is able to train at the Monster Factory. So this is a chance for him to get well, his feet wet. I thought I saw him, like, just a few weeks ago. He didn't look transformed. Well, oh, no. I mean, he didn't, uh, you know, he's not exactly going to be on the cover of Muscle and Fitness magazine anytime soon. But, I mean, he's he's bigger than he was. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm. He's, he's, he's doing, he's training. He's, he's, he's taking the vitamins. He's saying the prayers, brother. You know, he's, he's, he's right. doing the whole bit. I hope so. Because he's going to, I mean, it, in wrestling. And I'm, sure, right, and I'm be... sure that Danny Cage and the folks at the Monster Factory will definitely be able to help out with that. Um, yes, yeah, uh, the camp's open to only 50 participants and is meant as an orientation for new prospective students of the Monster Factory, like Lucas. Or for those who just want to take their training to the next level. For those interested, you can give a call or an email to Monster Factory owner Danny Cage. Uh, You can call him at 609-471-7904. That's 609-471-7904. Or you can email him at monsterfactorytv at gmail.com. And, you know, I joke around about his size and all for Ron, and and yet at the same time, really, I think the main element you need is toughness. In order to get into the ring... The main element you need is cardio. Like, you need to be fit. That's a lot of what it is. Because you're constantly running the ropes and, you know, doing leapfrogs, duck under spots. I mean, it's all just being in great cardio really? shape. You, you think th- I, I, I mean, I think you have to have some strength, obviously, and uh, agility, but cardio is, like, the main thing. Like, for those who, really? you know, who, you know, sprint from one end of this gym to the other and are, uh, you know, sucking wind, uh, you, you got a long road ahead of you. Yeah, I don't know. To me, I think once you get once you get thrown down and you have to get back up again, to me, that's got to be one of the toughest elements of it to do. Oh that yeah, over taking, well, and taking over back bumps—that is a whole other element of it. I'm sure he's going to find that out in a couple of weeks, and you have the chance to too. Plus, just found this out a couple of days ago. For those who sign up for the three-day camp at the Monster Factory, you'll be eligible to attend an exclusive seminar at the Monster Factory in June with WWE talent evaluator and Vince McMahon right-hand man, Gerald Briscoe. That's right, one of the original Stooges, Mr. McMahon. (laughs) So definitely check that out again. All the information is at monsterfactory.org. We are here live at Senator Tommy Tomlinson's Children's Expo. Uh, See here if we can, uh, we got, yeah, people uh, posing with all the different uh, belts and whatnot. Including an old friend of mine who's uh, stopped at the table. He and I go way back to elementary school. My buddy Jesse here in the house, uh, along with his uh, wife and uh, uh, little child here, looking at the uh, the wrestling things. Or actually, she's looking away from it. It's probably not a bad idea. <laughs> no, I can't, there's so much there, there's so much going on here. It's kind of you have to have your head on a swivel. It, it's kind of a, a an amazing thing in that regard. And uh, the philosopher Chris Ermer kind of uh, bringing the people in, just kind of letting, right. uh, yeah, letting them check out the, uh, 
you know, the, 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 the belts and the, the, the Slammy Award replica that's here and all the different uh, fun things here. I'll tell you, Lucas better have his head on a swivel when he steps inside that ring. Oh, brother, he, most, <laughs> he better. Well, he most certainly does. I mean, he can Good. barely keep his attention for more than three seconds. <laughs> That might he's going to hear that on the replay right. later, and he's probably going to have uh, some unsavory words for me. Uh, well, uh, just wait till he hears what I uh, I, I question his ability question in the his ring. Ability in he's the ring. he's yeah. not going to appreciate that very much. He, yeah, he's not going to have a lot of fun with that. <laughs> but All right, well, we're I'm here just, for another, uh, what, I'm, another 20 I'm minutes or kid. so? Yes. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, he and I have become, I mean, he's, he's I, I, you know, slag on him a bit as far as him being an intern but i mean he and i because of our love of wrestling and you know because of all the different events we've gone to and i mean you know the camaraderie with the show i mean i consider him a very close friend and yeah I mean, i'm pulling for him i hope that he uh you know i wish him all the best in his future endeavors yeah absolutely <laughs> which is a, i know a, a term that wwe uses when people are fired don't oh, worry oh, lucas oh. you're not fired probably panicking uh <laughs> panicking as he's listening to this all right. Uh, well, do, do we want to uh, do we want to throw things back to the uh, back to, to WBCB yes. Studios now that we're somewhat settled in? I can take a little bit of a breath here now that uh, yes. this unorthodox show is finally settled in a little bit. Just as it's starting to get going, going to be uh, right back off apparently. That's how these things go, though. So we're going to throw it to Nick Cataldi back at the studio. Going to pay some bills. We'll come back here for more insanity, more awesomeness, more moon bounce. <laughs> here at Senator Tommy Tomlinson's Children's Expo. It's going on till 2, so you can make your way out here, too. Still ample time to get out here. It's a 2002 Rock Way in Holland, PA. That's Council Rock High School South. Senator Tommy Tomlinson's Children's Expo. Check it out and stick with us here. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Pro Wrestling Weekly presents Today in Wrestling History, April 18. On this date in 2004, WWE held its Backlash pay-per-view. In the main event, Chris Benoit defeated Shawn Michaels and Triple H in a triple threat match to retain the World Heavyweight Championship. On this date in 2005, WWE Monday Night Raw aired live from Madison Square Garden in New York City. In the main event, Jim Ross pinned Triple H in a no disqualification match. On this date in 2010, TNA held its lockdown pay-per-view. In the main event, Abyss, Jeff Hardy, Jeff Jarrett, and Rob Van Dam defeated Desmond Wolf, James Storm, Robert Roode, and Sting in a lethal lockdown match. This has been Today in Wrestling History, April 18. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Ferran Derry here with you, live from Senator Tommy Tomlinson's Children's Expo alongside the philosopher Chris Ermer. Uh, what a heck of a ride it's been so far. Yeah, literally. <laughs> and now Just, they got the, uh, the parachute going over there, like gym jams. Oh, yeah, the, uh, over at... Um, the, uh, the the fitness, uh, let's play today, fitness and exercise activities. That's All what right. uh, they've got going on over there. And there's this is the first time they have fitness and exercise activities. And I think it's part of a movement to get kids going. Maybe get, get kids them moving. Yes, get kids wrestling, doing something. Uh, okay. That's a possibility. There we go. Maybe I'll go over there, uh, yeah, body slam a couple. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> that probably wouldn't be recommended. Well, I don't know. This this one here that's in front of me, he looks like he needs to be. Uh, uh, he needs a, a slam or two. <laughs> oh, Suplex, wow. maybe. Ferran, you are you are a cruel individual. Uh, <laughs> something that his dad hasn't done already. <laughs> Not that he'll admit it on the air, of course. <laughs> All right, let's get into some more news and notes here as we are live from Senator Tommy Tomlinson's Children's Expo going on until 2 o'clock. We'll be here until 1, so I want to make sure I get as much as I can in. Uh, the Hulkster. Hulkamania. Hulk, yeah. He's, he's running be, wild. Well, he'll be running wild at a Susan G. Komen event coming up in May. He'll well, be serving funny. as the official Grand Marshal for the 2015 Susan G. Komen Washington, D.C. Race for the Cure. And that'll be taking place at the National Mall on uh, Saturday, May 9th. Wow, can his Hulkster knees make a 5K? 
Uh, somehow I don't. I don't even think they can make a five feet at this point. Wow, that's <laughs> no. I mean, b between having both knees replaced, having the one hip replaced from all those leg drops over the years, you know, you're just you're landing right on the hip. He's got him. He's got all new. He's had like equipment. eight or nine back surgery. Yeah, I know. He's he probably is the six million dollar man at this point with all the uh, the rebuilding that he's had done. Well, that's great though. Hulkster, give him back. Actually, uh, speaking of surgeries and whatnot, there's a couple of others that have gone on. Uh, one from a Hall of Famer and one from somebody currently on the WWE roster. Uh, first of all, WWE announcing that Jay Uso, one half of the Uso brothers uh, tag team, Jimmy and Jay Uso. Jay underwent shoulder surgery last week, and uh, WWE physician, uh, he told WWE.com, quote, at WrestleMania, Jay suffered an anterior shoulder dislocation on the left arm, which was later evaluated back in Florida, where they had their developmental uh, thing and whatnot. That sounds painful. Uh, the story notes that surgical steps were taken also to tighten his rotator cuff and shoulder capsule. That just sounds painful. See, you got to be tough. That's what I Yeah, that's where the toughness comes in. But the timetable listed his, for his return is roughly six months, so we'll see him at Hell in a Cell in October, perhaps. That's the pay-per-view in, yeah, in the October there. And also, Bobby the Brain Heenan going under the knife. The legendary manager. Uh, you know, Nick Cataldi had his... Auto or biography flow. I think it was an autobiography. Flip yeah, his autobiography. TV studios and I flipped through that a few times. Interesting. Oh, he is he is hysterical. Um, but he has had a litany of health issues to say the least. He underwent an undis undisclosed surgery this past Tuesday, according to the social media pages of colleagues Mike Tanay and Mean Gene Okerlund. Uh, Tanay relayed word from Heenan's wife that the surgery was successful. Uh, to give you an idea of some of the health issues he's had, it uh, goes back 13 years when he was first diagnosed with throat cancer in 2002, which is a, a, a shame to say the least, considering that talking was his one of his greatest points. Uh, you know, pretty early on in uh, in this radio show, I know Eric Luce Cannon Gargiulo had Bobby Heenan on uh, on at least one occasion, and uh, it was supposed to be. A, I think he told the story on our crossover show six years ago. It was supposed to be a, a one-segment, you know, 10, 15-minute interview because he didn't know how his throat was going to be. And uh, Eric started to wrap it up and, you know, thank him and everything. He said, you know, w what are you wrapping it up for? I'm, 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 still, you know, I'm still good to go. And they went the entire hour. So that, that, that's, a, that's a fun story. Uh, but unfortunately, things haven't gone nearly as well uh, since that time for Bobby the Brain. He's also had reconstructive surgery on his jaw. He also had to deal with tongue cancer, which mm. I didn't even know that was a thing. Mm. Go figure. But uh, hopefully a speedy recovery for, uh, in my opinion, and many others as well, the greatest manager in wrestling history. And he goes back to, you know, the glory days. The, 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 the Hulk mania, that, that, yeah. That, that, that was, uh, that was uh, the Heenan family, always uh, trying to get the title off of Hulk Hogan. And, and some of the best stuff that was in that book, I think, was like his stories on the road. Oh, yeah. The, the, some of the Andre stories, I would imagine, right. were hysterical. Andre the Giant. And just those, road, you know, being a road warrior, trying to make it in the business and having to just travel from one one burg to the next town and all that stuff. With oh, yeah. Guys. One night you're wrestling in Dallas, and then the next night you're in Houston. The night after that, you're in Oklahoma City. And, yeah, yeah I mean, there's... And, bef like, before he hit that, I think he was doing some really small towns. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Those were uh, uh, it's great to kind of recognize a guy who was part of what made professional wrestling as big as it was and continues to be. Oh, most definitely. He, he, is, uh, he, he is a class act and then some. And uh, yeah, I wish nothing, for the best, uh, nothing but the best for him uh, as far as uh, getting back into it. I mean, he's, he's definitely been around a while. He just uh, this past November turned 70. Wow. Wow. You know, he's, he's one. I, I, I thought he would be a little north of 70, I got to say. Yeah, no, well, he, I mean, he was always very spry. That's, uh, that, that, that's for sure. I was surprised earlier this year to hear, hear that Eric Clapton is 70 years old. That made me feel Oh, wow. <laughs> that, that, that struck me a little bit hard. That, that hit a, yeah, I know. It, I, I hit a nerve. Well, I mean, I've, I've had one of those. The Undertaker turned 50 a few weeks ago. Wow. Stone Cold Steve Austin's going to be turning 50 later this year. Wow. So uh, th those are, yeah, those wrestling milestone ages are the ones that kind of make you go, oh, yeah. really? Yeah, I thought that was still a young guy. Yeah. And then I thought and I then was it still reminds a young me. Guy. Yeah, exactly. I thought I was still young, and I'm turning <laughs> later this year. <laughs> uh, 
WrestleMania 31 setting a dubious record, to say the least. WrestleMania 31 attendees in Levi Stadium out in Santa Clara, California. They set the record for most Wi-Fi data used at Levi Stadium. Wow. I did not know that was a statistic, but apparently it is. By using 4.5 terabytes of Wi-Fi data in the, I guess, four or five hour period that they were there. Big social media, like presence for the oh, WWE yeah. when everything, anything go, big events go on you're oh yeah uploading photos yeah. posting you know little vine you know vine videos uh, twitter i mean all the different and anything that's using the internet and putting whatever they're doing out there yeah the people they're, they're not going to use their own data plan they're going to attach up to the levi stadium wi-fi and they did to the tune of four and a half terabytes of data in that roughly, I guess, five, uh, five or six hour span. That must be a lot. That sounds impressive. I don't oh, know what is. that means, but that. Yeah, okay. I didn't know how tech savvy you were. Ah. I mean, you're, you're tech savvy with the dials and the knobs and the Comrex and all and all the engineering stuff. But I guess that's a different animal, to say the least. Yeah. The previous record, what to give you an idea, was 3.3 terabytes used during the San Francisco 49ers 2014 home opener. Okay. So, I mean, that's. I don't know, quick math here, like a roughly 33% increase over the record. And that that's that the WWE. That's, that's the power of the WWE. The, that's WrestleMania. That's right? I mean, yeah. that, that's big time. <laughs> Something Vince McMahon has wanted to do for quite a while, to uh, to say the least. Oh, the pretzel people. Oh, we got pretzels. We got chips here. Well, I won't be, oh, oh, and water as well. Oh, thank wow. You. Thank you very much. No, thank you. I'll need that. Uh, Who are these compliments of? Tommy Tomlinson? Hey, thank oh, you. Oh, excellent. Thank you very much. I, I will... Most uh, most definitely indulge in that. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and have a picture with the uh, with the belt. Go ahead, uh, throw it over the shoulder. I was gonna say it might be a little big for his waist, but look over the head. You can, yeah, hold it over your head. You uh -huh. can put it on on top of the shoulder. You can go a number of different ways with it. Oh wow, <laughs> that's right. We took care. We yeah, we've taken care of all of our obligations as far as uh, okay. So we're we're good to go there. Just making sure. Yeah, yeah. Go go for it. Definitely. Check out the slammy. Oh, yeah, the autographs on the back. People love this stuff. It's great. Oh, wow. All right, so I did mention earlier, uh, I believe when I was in the car, that next week, weather pending, we will uh, we will not be on the air as we've got a Pensbury High School baseball game set for a 11 o'clock first pitch, I believe. But if it's supposed to rain, then... Uh, well, obviously things may change, but uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll go from there. And Lucas will be uh, conspicuous by his absence two weeks from now, as he'll be at the Monster Factory uh, three-day camp that's going on as well. So uh, I'm not going to be hearing from him for a little while, unless I throw some drops in or something like that. And when he comes I've back, he's going to be like a changed person. Yeah, he most certainly right. is. Gonna be yeah, he'll be able to talk about the experience, and we're looking forward to that certainly. Uh, and yeah, in a couple minutes, uh, we'll we'll do one of his favorite segments, uh, birthdays, because we got a couple of those uh, over the course of uh, of today. A couple notable names in uh, wrestling history who celebrate a birthday today. Also, I uh, <laughs> yeah, you're gonna you're gonna get on uh, on headset for this, uh, 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 Chris Ermer. Uh, I'd mentioned earlier that one of the matches that was uh, added to the Extreme Rules lineup was uh, Sheamus against Dolph Ziggler in a Kiss Me Arse match. Uh, yeah, I, I heard that earlier in the show, and I'm still a little speechless. Yeah, well, th this is kind of where I was hoping that Lucas would be here because I, I would <laughs> I would love to get his reaction. I actually put together, because I thought he would be here, a retrospective of other matches involving posterior puckering. Wow, I, I didn't... Re I, th I thought the the tally would be zero. You thought the tally would be zero, but no, there were three others then that were on pay-per-view, no less. Well, I would hope so. That's yeah, not, that's, 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 not, that's not a Monday Night Raw attraction, you know, or Monday <laughs> Nitro, or dare I say Thursday Thunder. You know, no, this is... Uh, this is some top-level stuff. Uh, first of all, you got to go back to SummerSlam, August of 97. Wow. Of course, it all goes back to 97. Owen Hart defending the Intercontinental title against Stone Cold Steve Austin. Austin putting up the stipulation that if he didn't win the Intercontinental title, that he would kiss Owens behind, saying, as Austin put it, if I can't kick, yeah, I'll kiss it if I can't kick it. Easy for me to say. And so did they have, like, the... Well, Austin WWE? ended up winning, so it, it, it was a moot point. Okay, all right, all right. That was that was actually an infamous match where Austin suffered a stinger during the match by being dropped on his head, and 
You know that feeling where you kind of, you know, your arm falls asleep or something? You have that numb, tingly feeling? That was all head to toe, Austin's body. Wow. wow. And it took a few minutes of him laying prone on the mat where, I mean, Owen could have easily covered him, but he decided to gloat instead. And Austin regained enough feeling to roll Owen up for the three count and surprise him. And, uh... Won the Intercontinental title and uh, all right. So even after 1997, there were no lips and keisters connected. Um. Well, th th there were two other instances. One of which, two years later, SummerSlam '99. For some reason, it seems to be uh, the hottest event of the summer for um, for backside. I, you know what? There's no good place I can go with that, so no. I'm just going to move on. The Rock mm -hmm. against Billy Gunn in a Kiss My Behind match. Uh, the Rock ended up winning partly due to Billy Gunn bringing uh, an assistant out, and that ended up backfiring, pun slightly intended. Mr. A Double Crooked Letter bringing out a full-figured woman with torn hosiery uh, to have the great one uh, kiss her rump instead. Uh, but The Rock ended up turning the tide, and Billy Gunn ended up with a face full of hindquarters before hitting, getting hit with the rock bottom and looking at the lights for the three count. <laughs> okay, all right. That was that was 1999. That was 1999. It, it, notice this is all attitude era. That that's when you know you you can push the envelope with a lot more. That's why I think the fact that they're uh, using the Irish vernacular is the only way they can get along with it. Because uh, I don't think other you know the fact that they can say arse instead of um, instead of the other term. I'm also noticing that there's always a left turn somewhere in the, the plot line that yes. avoids someone <laughs> actually kissing. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Bottom. Well, well that, that would be until 2001. WCW Greed, the last pay-per-view, a mere week and a half, or I think actually, no, a week and a day before it was announced that WCW was bought out by the then World Wrestling Federation, now known as WWE. It was the very last pay-per-view. It was a tag team match. The American Dream, Dusty Rhodes and his son, Dustin Rhodes, against Ric Flair and Jeff Jarrett. Uh, Dustin Rhodes ended up pinning Ric Flair, but somehow Jeff Jarrett ended up, um, in a way, puckering up in uh, that he got the equivalent of a Rikishi stink face. <laughs> okay. Are you familiar with that? Do I have to explain that? Okay. I, I got it. You I got it. So. Uh, with a red underwear-clad American Dusty Rhodes. Wow. Wow. If you will. <laughs> I won't. Yes, please don't. <laughs> Nobody should. Maybe we shouldn't have. No, we shouldn't. <laughs> but we've got just enough time here uh, for Lucas's favorite segment, birthdays. On this date in 1959, Debbie Sat yeah, easy for me to say, Sateski was born. The former WWF women's wrestler known as Debbie Combs turns 56 today. Also Ooh. from, yeah, I know she was. She wrestled in the WWF in the mid 80s and you know, would try to challenge for the women's title, which was held by the fabulous Moolah and uh, uh, Sherry Martell, Sensational Sherry. Uh, and then she came back during the, uh, the 94 push when Alundra Blaze had the women's title, who was just inducted into the Hall of Fame this year, Alundra Blaze. Well, happy birthday. Happy birthday to her. Also, 1961, Steve, Lombard uh, Steve Lombardi was born. Easy for me to say. I should probably get some of this water that's here in front of me. The longtime WWE wrestler and road agent, best known as uh, Jobber, the Brooklyn Brawler, turns uh, 54 today. His dad was Vince, right? No, his dad was no. not Vince Lombardi. Oh, okay. <laughs> Got to get those football jokes in. Also, for Lucas's comedy fix, because he's big on the comedy, uh, this date in 1953, Frederick Allen Moranis was born. The actor and musician best known for movies including Ghostbusters, Little Shop of Horrors, Spaceballs, and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, known as Rick Moranis, oh, yeah. turned 62 today. And a little bit of a shout-out also, a good friend of mine, Extreme Kyle, who will occasionally post on the... Pro Wrestling Weekly Facebook fan page, Kyle from Northern Liberties. Uh, his birthday is today as well, although I will not uh, mention his age uh, just because it's a nice thing to do. So that's going to about do it for us here. There's a lot still going on. Um, coming up right at the top of the hour is uh, another bit of Let's Play Today, the, uh, the fitness activities. Uh, we've got uh, the SEPTA K-9 unit coming on. It's all going on for the next hour and change here at Senator Tommy Tomlinson's Children's Expo here at Council Rock High School South, 2002 Rockway in Holland. Thanks so much to philosopher Chris Ermer for uh, keeping us uh, on the air here. And thanks as well to Nick Cataldi back into the studio. Greatly appreciate it. And uh, we now take you to Phillies baseball action, the Phillies and the Washington Nationals down in